This episode of the Red Bull Rant is by the fine patrons that support us through patreon.com slash Red Bull Rant. You can support us for the low, low price of $1 a month, and you can get exclusive content, including a monthly wrap-up for the New York Red Bulls. We want to send a special shout-out to our patrons who support us at $5 a month. That is our producer-level reward. Thank you to Jeremiah Dempster, Clayton John, Chris Adamek, and Maeve Dartinez. Now, on to the show. The Red Bull Rant is a free-flowing podcast with three soccer-loving idiots who don't know when to shut their dumb potty mouths. So listener discretion, yeah, it's, it's pretty much advised. Friends, to the show never ends. This is the Red Bull Rant Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Iapico. I'm Truman, and this episode 401, break time, is over. <clears throat> yes, very short break for <clears throat> the New York Red Bulls. Uh, now it's time to get back into it. Uh, clearly, past night here tonight, he has something more important to do. <clears throat> now, what's more important than talking about the Red Bulls? I don't know, but... <laughs> nothing Come on. uh so no game to recap because we talked about it last week but just the prediction standings to make sure everybody's uh clear <clears throat> so just short of the halfway point truman is in first with nine points i'm in second with eight and pat is in third with two points <clears throat> so that's heading into uh the match on sunday which will be the Red Bulls' first game on actual broadcast television, and I don't even know how long. Uh, also against the their first MLS game against Charlotte FC. Uh, that game is Sunday, <clears throat> June 11th, 3 p.m. Eastern Time uh, on ABC. Uh, Charlotte comes into this game with a 5-1-8 record, 16 points, uh, minus 5 goal difference. I think it's like... 10 or 11 in the conference. So Pat predicts this one a one nothing loss. He is just going to keep rolling with the reverse jinx. Yep. And hope, hope it pays off. Guess he's not getting the belt anytime soon. <laughs> no. He, he's sacrificing the belt for the greater good. That's what he's doing. <clears throat> so, Truman, you're up. What do you think is going to happen against Charlotte? Well, first things first, you got me confused because actually the game is on Saturday. Oh, is it Saturday? I thought it was Sunday. Jesus. Okay, it's Saturday. Uh, Oh, God. For half a second thinking I'd be able to watch it at home. But no, it'll be on while I'm You know, today's the ninth. I should have realized that the 11th is two days away. (laughs) Uh, That being said, really what we should talk about is what just happened in Charlotte. Because uh, we obviously haven't talked about it. That <laughs> no, their, we haven't. Their manager, um, not even halfway through the season, on an expansion team, supposedly all because of one of the designated players said that um, basically, what is it? The if if it's either he goes or I go situation that <laughs> that is not play for this guy. So I saw I saw something else come out that basically he lost the locker room. Uh, like after losses, he would not show up. He would just leave by himself. Like he wasn't doing a good job of training in between matches, wasn't doing like anything to be supportive of and, and grow a culture on the team. I guess there's also the conflicts with the front office, but I mean, that's not necessarily anything new. But <clears throat> for an expansion team manager to just go out before the halfway point is crazy. It's, it's, I mean, it's almost unheard of because you expect that first year to have growing pains. Uh, and then you usually get fired your second year. And that's usually how that goes with so most expansion teams. Barring those and, few, like, and that's even know. an expansion team that existed before. Like, Jesse Marsh came up with Montreal, who had played, I believe, in the USL the year before. And he got fired for one year, but at least you could argue he was an existing manager. Right. Then I, right. Think I think Cincinnati – Lasted like a year. Uh, I think we talked about um, Adrian Heath last with Orlando for a year and a half in MLS, and he had been with them for, in USL for at least two or three years before that. So, I mean, a 
hell, even New York City FC, their f- very first season in the league, they didn't fire their coach after one season. Right, like, you, you're just building something. You know, you're just starting yeah. to build something. Um, not every team can sign like three great designated players and have an instance of success. It doesn't usually happen that often. Um, but if you want to talk about the game in itself, big question is who faulty? I don't know. They don't tell us anything. Maybe we will find out tomorrow. You know who's actually playing in this game. Uh, I'll, well, I'll say this: I don't think the Red Bull are afraid of a big crowd. They never have been. Um, they're not afraid of playing in Atlanta. They're not afraid of really playing in Seattle, Portland. I mean, results don't always show. The results definitely show against Atlanta. Um, so I don't think it's a team that's going to be afraid of playing them. Uh, apparently, the what I heard is this team is going to play a possession game, which is great for the Red Bulls. That's exactly what they want. They want you to hold the ball. They want you to. So I'm, I'm hoping that stays in their favor. I hope that, that that's what Charlotte does. They try to hold the ball, and the Red Bull presses and create turnovers and wins this game 3-1, because that's what I'm saying they're going to do. I think they're going to win 3-1. Uh, I'm not afraid of Charlotte. Uh I'm sort of also not like they're dumb fans. Really, maybe just a couple of them. Tip, not, all, not all the fans. I'm not going to yell at all the Charlotte fans. But there's a few dummies out there. Didn't understand how the Open Cup worked. Uh, didn't know why we hosted it, not them. Uh, didn't understand why they wouldn't host it at their big football stadium. When, when the fuck would they want to host a, a fucking U.S. A Open Cup game at a football stadium? I mean, the Sounders don't even do that because they're not idiots. So just for that. I think they're a bunch of morons, and I think the Red Bulls are going to come out and actually win another road game. I wish you hadn't said 3-1 because I was going to use that score since it was the score in the Open Cup match. Mm. But now I can't do it. Um, I think we're going to win. They were playing a possession game when we beat them in the Open Cup, and I... Pretty sure their interim manager was on the, the coaching staff, which means he's not really going to change much. <clears throat> um, it's been a whole new style, you know, not even halfway through a season either, you know? Yeah. Um, we are going to miss some players like Aaron Long's going to be out because he's uh, still with the, the United States. I think he's going to be through the next two Nations League matches. Actually, isn't one of them today? <laughs> I think about it. <clears throat> this is how prepared we are. Um, okay, tomorrow. They're playing tomorrow night. <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure there's two matches in this window. Uh, next one for the U.S. Yeah, they got to play through June 14th. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Long's not going to be back. Um supposedly Clark is still around, which I guess is a good thing. I mean, he's not starting much. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not really scared of Charlotte. I, we're, I don't think we're going to shut him out because apparently we don't do a lot of shutouts. No, we uh, give up really stupid goal half the time. <laughs> Most yeah. games, even the games they, they win or draw, they're giving up one really stupid goal. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with a repeat of our last MLS victory, and that's 4 1 this time on the road. Wow. Because I have to be different. I can't be exactly the same. That is ballsy. I feel like 2 1 is too close. And I feel like we're not going to give up more than one goal because that's our season average at this point. Yeah. So. <clears throat> All right. Uh, anything else for the Charlotte match? Uh, no, I, I wish it was on at like, I don't know, fucking 5.30 so I could watch it live instead of having to watch it when I get home from work. You know? It's annoying. So now I'm curious, is there something going on later on ABC that, that day on Saturday that's like this is going to be the lead-in for it? I, I don't pay attention to ABC schedule. <laughs> well, I, ju- I was thinking like hockey or something, but... No, no hockey. Uh, maybe the NBA today because they love to take several days off between games. That's true. It could be the M- NBA. <clears throat> Although the Rangers game six would be Saturday, so and that is on ESPN or ABC. Hmm. 
right. Um, New York Red Bulls 2. Uh, surprise, surprise, they lost again. <laughs> one nothing at Luton United. <clears throat> that puts the record at 1-2-11. Five points, negative 16 goal difference. Dead last in the East. Powerhouse. <clears throat> this is what happens when you let Walniak, who knew what he was doing developing youth, walk away. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, it's it's important that those players get minutes, but it's important that those players get minutes where they give them confidence and, you know, they actually win a few. But fair be to them, they did win a title before the Red Bulls did. That is true. So. They, have the, they have the first trophy in the, in the organization's case. All right. Uh, next is Gotham FC, who is uh, now on the verge of a winning streak after winning one nothing at, or sorry, one nothing versus the Washington Spirit. The next match, or sorry, that puts them at 3 0 and 2 with nine points, uh, zero goal difference, number six in the NWSL, and they'll look to make it a three game win streak uh, on Saturday, June 11th at Kansas City. That game is at 8 30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I had dumping grab, but I completely forgot about the United States, so we're real quickly going to talk, which I didn't watch them. Apparently, it didn't matter. Uh, nope. It was a 0-0 draw versus Uruguay, which we almost gave away, apparently, towards the end of the game. Did did you watch it? Honestly, I, I don't watch these games. I I just, I, I think I've talked about this in the past. It's very hard for me to watch these games that don't really matter that much. I mean, they're just tune-up games, you know, playing players, seeing what they got. I just, it, I don't care. There's so many other things I can watch on TV. <laughs> This is like your ver- this is your U.S. version of the U.S. Open Cup for Pat. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> I, doesn't phase me one way or the other. And again, I'm glad I didn't watch a zero's <laughs> 90 minute game. So, all right, but the U.S. does have two games coming up in the Concacaf Nations League. They'll start their match play against. Uh, Grenada tomorrow night, 10 p.m., and I believe that game's in Austin. Exciting. Which is a weird start time, but... uh, And then on Tuesday, June 14th, their second match in the group against... or at El Salvador, and that game is also 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I have no idea how either the team is going to play. Reality is we should kind of walk through this. Because the group is uh, okay, we're week A. The group is El Salvador, Grenada, and us. Oh wow! So, I mean, if we don't come out of this group with undefeated, yeah, undefeated or was it um, three wins and a draw at worst? But that's a disappointment. All right. Uh, with that, it is time for the dumping ground. I'm the trash man. <clears throat> All right. Uh, first thing I have, the World Cup host cities for 2026 are going to be announced tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I think I saw somebody mention for... Canada, they're probably going to get two host cities, and most likely it'll be Vancouver and Toronto. Um, I think Chicago is speculated to be one. New York is obviously going to be one. How do you have a World Cup in the U.S. without New York? Right. Well, you're looking, it's going to be uh, MetLife Stadium, right? Yeah. Guaranteed. You're playing a game in Chicago. You're playing a game in Dallas, right? I, I would assume. Yeah. And they have to figure out how to get SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles uh, regulation size for FIFA because for everything I've read, it is not. And I think you, you can't not have a game in L.A. And it can't be at the Rose Bowl as much as it would be fun to see it 
there again and it can't be at the la coliseum just because they're they're old and you want to have a big fancy stadium like the one in los angeles like the sofi stadium you want that to be the host stadium yeah so you know vegas is gonna get one for that reason yeah i don't i don't i don't know vegas is cool i don't think you'd have a game there i think if you're really going i mean how many maybe like the third place game (laughs) Right. So how many how many stadiums are there in a in a group stage? Do you know that offhand without us like taking 25 minutes to look it up? Like, uh, I, I think total stadiums they generally go to is like 12, right? So two in Canada, two in Mexico. I, I would think one in Mexico and it's probably Azteca. Right. Which right. That makes sense. And then you figure Chicago, New York. I'm going to say FedEx Field because it's the closest one to D.C. Either that it's either that or, or Baltimore. Because you got to get the nation's capital involved some way. Okay. Right. So you're already talking. That's three. And then, so six total if you include two in Canada, one in Mexico. I mean, Dallas, Dallas, I think, is it's a definite. You're definitely. That's, that's, that's seven. Right. Um, Seattle. I mean, you could have. Maybe. Seattle, they got to put grass in. Um, you could have one in Florida, like in Miami. Um, it, it's. I mean, they're going to put grass in New York because it's a turf they, field up in Mount Life. So they they could do Houston as well, right? If they didn't do Dallas, you do Houston. Yeah. Uh, right, because they've had games there before, I believe, with with grass. Uh, Kansas City because it's hosted the Nations League, so you've proven it can host a tournament like that. Can we have it at Sporting KC Stadium, which is really it's not big enough, but we fun that everyone to be in Kansas City, Kansas. That I would wish be a treat. I really wish I really wish they would allow these smaller soccer specific stadiums because imagine like <clears throat> Red Bull Arena, um, Audi Field. As much as DC sucks, it's Audi Field, and it would literally be in DC. Um, maybe Houston Stadium, cause only because it's kind of funky in terms of the stands. Mm-hmm. Um. What the hell is one in L.A.? Something Bank Stadium. Well, whatever Stub Hub slash <laughs> whatever it's been called recently. Yeah. Or that one or uh, the L- oh you mean the the LAFC Stadium? Yeah, the one actually in L.A. Uh, Funky Bank or whatever the hell it's called. I don't even know. Uh, maybe Portland. Although yeah. Portland, I don't think they. I think they've been trying to get grass on that field forever, and it's not going to happen. Apparently something with like the water table over there, which stops it from being a feasible option. Yeah. Uh, KC Stadium, one of Columbus or Cincinnati. Like if you went to these smaller stadiums, but like all these things I'm mentioning have been built in the last 15 years. Yeah. Right. So they're all relatively good shape. Um, they would all provide a fantastic atmosphere because you would have a smaller amount of people, but in a stadium built specifically for the sport. Like imagine it like a, an elimination World Cup game at Red Bull Arena. Be that would just that would be yeah, it would be such amazing energy in that stadium. But they'll never do it because it's too small. Yeah, it's just not big enough. Um, I would assume that uh, Foxborough will get a game. I would think. Maybe. If you're covering the country, you go. The only, the only reason I would say no is because of Toronto being somewhat close by. They wanted to spread it out a little more. Yeah, I guess. Totally would never happen, but would just kind of be cool for it. Uh, Green Bay. Uh, Lambeau Field whole state of the World Cup game. That's a tundra. <laughs> All right, so realistically, New York, Chicago, Dallas, one of Baltimore and D.C. Um, L.A., if it's still if I can get his act together. Seattle. I, I'm going to throw Kansas City in there because I feel like since they host the Nations League that it proves the stadium is worth it. Um, I, I could see Vegas, especially because over the last five years, there's been a, a – The, the, the soccer world has grown to more widely accept betting. 
not that they haven't previously, but we're seeing many more shirt sponsors that are gambling companies. Well, the rest of the world loves the game. We're the only ones that are kind of like behind the times on that. No, but I'm talking now like shirt sponsors too. Like Everton just signed with, signed uh skate which is a gambling and crypto company <laughs> i love it so i could see i could see vegas being an option for that reason i don't know there's i think there's stuff to choose from <laughs> what 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 time is it what time are they doing it tomorrow i don't know i i just know it's tomorrow Let's it's see. Like, and just draw just balls out of a out of thing. Go, all right, here it is, and it's here. And you're playing here. Uh so it will be four PM Central, so I think I guess five PM Eastern. Yep. Cool. Apparently Kansas City is doing a watch party at um the Power and Light District downtown. I saw some of Chicago doing a watch party. I mean, why do you need a watch party to find out you're going to host a World Cup game? Is oh. If there's a game in New England, I will probably I will probably go if I can get the tickets. I would go to that. If they, if they play in Baltimore, D.C., I'm going. Yeah, I, I could pretend to be a fan of a team. I have no problem doing that. I, I don't even care if I'm a fan of a team or not. I'll just go just for the experience and say I went to a World Cup match. Yeah, we only had one chance in fucking 1994. So, <laughs> and I and wasn't. I was 17 and definitely not getting tickets to any of those. All right, I'm not gonna say how old I was then. <laughs> I was not driving age. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. Um. So I didn't write it down, but. Next up, so the Canadian men's team uh, did not play their friendly uh, that was scheduled for this past week, and I forget who the, the team they're supposed to play was, but <clears throat> apparently they are in a contract dispute with the Canadian Soccer Association over how the ten million dollar prize money for qualifying for the World Cup is to be dispersed. Uh, From what I saw, Canada soccer is too cheap to even pay for uh, flights and hotels for family members to go to Qatar with that money. Yeah, I saw that too, but you know, you you can leave your friends and family at home. They don't want to go to Qatar. Just, Just don't go. Yeah, but the, the first time they're there since the eighties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta go in. You gotta go in four more years anyway. True, they are gu- yeah, anyway. They are guaranteed a spot in four years. Yeah, you're <clears> off. But it, it's just interesting that all of a sudden they're having problems, and they were like, "Nope, we're just not gonna play." Well, I, I'll say this. I, I mean, uh, you know, I always understand where players like that are coming from. It just sucks that they were they were going to play Panama. Um, Panama was a replacement team for Iran, I yes, think. Yes, for it, Iran. For Iran, because um, they didn't want to play them. And well, then they, Pan- they had a valid reason for not wanting to play Iran. Yeah, I mean. I, I'm not saying they did. Um, so Panama, like, takes their spot in the game, and they fucking – boycott that game and kind of screwed over the Panamanian team, which kind of sucks, but I well, mean, I get it. Panama still gets paid though, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Still, you want to play the game, right? Love of the game. What and this that? is pretty much the only World Cup warm-ups you're going to have because there's no break before the, the, the Cup in November, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else for dumping ground? Uh, yeah, Formula One is in Azerbaijan this weekend. Uh, Baku, I believe, is the city in 
a road in a road course that will make you throw up if you try to actually watch it from the driver's seat because there's so many turns where you think they're going to crash in the walls. But anyway, that's this weekend. And as you all know, because I've told you a hundred times, uh, Max Verstappen is currently in first place. Checo Perez is in third, and the Red Bulls are leading in the champion or the constructors championship. So um, another big weekend coming up for Red Bull Racing. Red Bull Honda, Red Bull Oracle Honda, whatever the hell they're calling themselves. So basically you're saying Red Bull gives you wins in Formula One. Yes, a fucking 100% they do. (laughs) And I'll tell you this real quick. I watched a YouTube video um, some guy made. I don't know who the other guy is. And he talked about is Red Bull bad for soccer? Um, And they went over all the things that Red Bull has done, other things they've bought, Formula One and big sports and Leipzig and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I talked about New York Red Bulls, obviously, briefly. Um, I'm just going to say this again because they said, oh, it's terrible that Red Bull owns everything. Um, not for nothing. No matter how you feel about the team being called Red Bull, they do a lot of shit for their fans. That's all I'm going to say, buddy. Buddy who's never going to listen to this show. Um, they do a shit ton for for the fans. They fucking bust them the games. They bust them to the drafts. They fucking take them everywhere. So they built a stadium with their own money, which is pretty badass. So I know it sucks being called Red Bull, and I know and, we've been a lot. And, but. and they made the stadium better because yeah. the, orig- the original plans it was going to be Columbus's stadium. Oh, it was going to be terrible. It was going to be the old, yeah, the old generic freaking oh, stadium on, or stage on one end crap shack. Oh, that would have been fucking terrible. So. I know we all we have the rights to bitch about this team. We definitely want them to bring in better players when they don't. Um, but it's not all bad. Just just saying. And I got the new uh, I got the new um, the new jersey. Nice. At the mail, yeah. So that's pretty cool. I'm panning over and only showing Jay. No one else is going to see that. But <laughs> I did get the new one. It came in the mail. And actually, right behind it, you can't see. It's right behind it is uh, the the one from last year. The light, the light one, the light blue one. So we have the light blue one, and that's the purple one, and the first jersey that says Red Bull on the front instead of the logo. Yeah, so I actually like that jersey or that sponsor logo better. I wish they would turn to that. It, it, if you're gonna have a Red Bull logo, be front and center, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah, it's gonna happen because Red Bull owns the team, right? They're, they're clearly not going to. Unless they got a very lucrative deal, they're not going to get that space away because it's free advertising. Right. <clears throat> but if you're going to put the logo there, I think the the Red Bull spelled out looked much cleaner than the team logo or the the energy drink logo does. I, uh, I'm t- I like them both, but what I do like about the lettering is that when I put it on, it's not a big old going around my gut and it doesn't look all weird in my shape and it just says red ball right here so maybe it's thinning i think that, i think that's why we like it it's thinning <laughs> it's it's the new vertical stripes yes exactly right <laughs> and so i think it's what it is my only real complaint about the the parlay jerseys is that they only come up with two designs a year i would rather them have a, a unique design per team and that would be a lot of fucking money that they're not going to spend because it's a league wide thing. Yeah, but you can easily raffle those jerseys off and get a, and get all that money back. I just I mean, don't like you can't get a number because it's a re- it's all recycled material. So yeah, but I mean, and granted, I'm not in manufacturing, but it can't be that much more recycled material to change the design slightly, right? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just, they're just not going to happen. At least get the light ones. Ugh, those light ones I thought sucked this year. Oh, yeah. That lettering was horrible. That Whoever came with, came with that coloring scheme didn't think about how it would look on TV. Yeah, because it was bad. <laughs> at least put some, like, black outline or something on it. Then yeah, whatever, my, at least I can tell what the number is. They were, they were talking about kind of commentary how bad it was apparently ray hudson was all up and down on that because oh miami, miami had the light color that ray hudson what a character <laughs> yeah 
All right. Anything else for Dummy Ground? Uh, no, I think that's it. I think that's all I got. All right. Well, Pat's not here. So that just leaves us with Truman's terrible team of the week. That's terrible. Well, there's not a lot of soccer to talk about. So I'm just going to mention that um, I know I shouldn't be complaining about this because they're having a great year so far. But the Mets got outscored in the past two games, 20 to 2. That's unacceptable. Unacceptable. Playing the Padres, we're not an amazing team. You can't, you can't only score two runs and, and give up 20. Just, just saying. Yeah, and, it's not a good look. No. So that's all I. <clears throat> all right. Let's wrap this one up. You can visit us at patreon.com slash Red Bull Rant. One dollar a month is all you need for exclusive content, such as our monthly wrap-up, live post games, anything you decide to do. You can email us, redbullrant at gmail.com. If you want to call us, 973-348-5329. Oh, shit. I just realized something. All right. Quick back to the ground. Oh. So, last week we were asking about the dog. Right, the, the sniffing dog. Uh, and, and we got the lowdown. All right, so Pierre Delecto sent us via DM. I'm not going to read every single tweet, but this is what happened. Um, actually, Pierre Delecto and Steven Santos, that could be taxi because he is part of it. So yeah. apparently there was a bomb threat called in to Red Bull Arena. And in response the police basically locked the area down, which totally understandable from what they're from a safety perspective. Um, apparently the Port Authority police were brought in. They um, funneled traffic into two lines of cars and had police dogs that were sniffing all the cars to make sure there's no bombs or anything like that. Uh, so Pierre says that he crossed the bridge from into Harrison from the Iron Belt at 6.20, and he didn't park until halftime began. So that would have been roughly 7.45. Hmm. Yeah. Let's so that's, that's, that's what happened. Drink. Say again? I said, who's threatening Red Bull Arena? Is it like Monster Energy Drink? Is it Jolt Cola? Some from Jolt Cola. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brondo. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> it is Brondo. <laughs> so plant type. I hope somebody gets. Please, if you if you understand that reference, please send a DM to me or a tweet. Yeah. Really. I hope I hope somebody gets that reference. If you don't. If you don't get it, look it up, and then watch what we're talking about. And then after you watch the first time, watch it again. Yes, yes. <laughs> watch it as many times as I have, which is simple. It's slowly, be- it's slowly becoming more and more of a documentary instead of a parody. <laughs> it's silly. Oh, God. <clears throat> All right. Uh, anyway, you can call us 973-348-5329. Facebook.com slash Red Bull Rant. On Twitter, at Red Bull Rant for the show. At Dr. Steve for myself. At the Truman for Truman. Subscribe to our show via iTunes, Stitcher Radio, YouTube Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast. Last words before we get out of here. Uh, two things. If you have not watched the show Shorzy, you should fucking watch it immediately. It's absolutely amazing. It brought a tear to my eye. Uh, and that, hey, we got a fucking MLS game to watch this weekend. So I'm very excited whether I uh, definitely, quote unquote, not watch it at work or actually watch it when I go home. Uh, it's just good to have them back. Um, God, which is the saddest thing ever. It's only been like a week off and still we just can't watch them again. Uh, but hey, make us feel good. Go in dumb old North Carolina and beat their pants off. Get down there and give us a big old fat win. All right, so for Truman and myself, this has been episode 401 of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in, and as always, go Red Bulls. Later, skaters.